Mona, I think you tapped into something interesting here, girl. This is the beginnings of a new piece of love and hip hop. We're in Miami and we have a lot to talk about. I'm like, come on through, cook in. I want to put my soapbox. That's basically it. Let's talk about drag and all its forms. What? Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on the video. Like I said, we are in Miami now, and I think Mona has tapped into something good. I think this is just what this franchise needed. We needed a boost of something, but I think she tapped on the right thing. This Miami market is very interesting, and as I said, we have a whole lot to talk about. These, the, the whole feel for me of Miami is different. It's, it, it's, it's, I don't know, there's a lot, like, they are tapping into a whole lot of stuff here that we're not tapping into in the other markets. Um, I see a lot of, um, we want to dance around with the issue of homosexuality versus hip hop we're and i mean in depth I, I i see us dancing around it in depth um colorism in depth i was like wow i was really sitting here taken back by this little colorism situation i was like wow and it's not one of the things that i really enjoy talking about but um ain't no way to even get around it so we're gonna talk about that too miami is getting ready to open up a whole can of worms let's just go ahead and let's get started Okay, first off, child, Trick Daddy. If Trick Daddy, <laughs> you got to respect Trick for who he is and what he's actually done um, for music, for the whole the whole hip hop music genre. You you have to respect him, but God damn it, Trick Daddy, bitch. Trick Daddy, bitch, you are the old bitch in the club. I said, Lord, and then you can't even read him. We can't even read Trick Daddy because that motherfucker sat on screen his goddamn self and said, shit, I got to do something different. He's sitting there talking to Gunplay and told him, I got to do something different. So I'm going to release this album. It's, you know, the TNT albums like Dynamite. Yeah, me and Trina. Trick and Trina. We're going to do it. But I got to do something because he said, yeah, I, I look like I'm pregnant. I'm either going to have this baby or, I'm, or, or do something with it. I said, you motherfucking right, because you surely look like your feet is ready for the stirrups. Standing up here, and I'm like, yeah, you're the old bitch in the club. Old bitch in the club. And then, like I said, we got introduced to gunplay. Um, that gunplay, there's some good things going on with gunplay, and there's some strange things going on with him. Now, um, he, we see him, and then his, his woman, Kiara. I think that's how, how you say it, Kiara. He had, uh, I think he kind of eased his way out of a legal situation when he was in Atlanta, but he's originally from Miami and he chose to move back to Miami. Um, he's a street boy. That's what he just, he's an old street boy. And I know there were bouts of infidelity that she was worried about. Um, Miami tip is one of the issues, and I think she is going to be an issue. Um, but it sounds to me, and they didn't just say it outward. It does sound like me like he had a battle with drugs, like maybe he's recovering. Like is he is he a recovering addict? Do any of you all know anything about his past? If you do, leave that in the comments because it kind of made me believe that maybe he had a bout with drugs at one point and maybe he recovered like he's a recovering addict. And I kind of looked at him and I'm looking and you could see all in him that at one point, I believe gunplay was probably fine as wine, honey. But he looks like he did travel about mm, 20 miles of real rough road. But 
there's there's a thing about he has a sexy thing about him. Now I would take all of this right here and just take a machete and slice that shit off. He has um you know real nice hair, and he has um his dreads, but the dreads ain't nice. It's just like it's like your nice regular hair pattern, and then this old untreated lop of shit in the middle of your head. Hey, I, that's ugly. It's ugly. But yeah, I like all his little tattoos and all his other little stuff he got going on. But he just looks a little rough around the edges. But it looks like at one time he was probably fine as shit. So I, I just want to see if if I read that wrong or was there some type of a bout. Maybe he was just a drug dealer or something. Maybe that was what it was. I don't know. It just looked like he's seen some rough times. But that's him, gunplay. He's I'll be watching. He's he seems very interesting. Real hard around the edge. Mm -hmm. What well, don't judge me. Anyway, moving on. Um, Lord have mercy, we got a blast from the past. A blast from the past, honey. She is back. Good old Shay, honey. And she looks fabulous in the opening credits. But then, you know, I was like, because I looked and said, is that? Look like Shay. That look like Scrappy Shay. And I said, "Oh, that is her." And then we got a better look at her. And and then you know, he's like, "Oh, there's Shay." Oh no, sorry, y'all. See, I'm being shady, honey. Here she is. Child just as ugly as she ever been, honey. She sat there talking about how she got this new body and all this. And yeah, the bitch, her body looks nice. But baby, something ain't never going to change. It's that mug, honey. And, you know, we could deal with her mug if her attitude wasn't so funky. Her attitude is so shitty. Ah, oh, Shay. You are so unlikable at times. Oh, my God. Anyway, but her whole point is she's dealing with pleasure P. Pleasure, yes, Pleasure P of Pretty Ricky. Pleasure P done got himself together. Still cute. He's like the cute little fat guy. You know, it's like, all right. And they've been dating. It's like a two-year thing, um, long distance. And now she done moved her ass to Miami. And he is in the process. They putting the band back together. Baby, let me tell you, when I say put the band back together, Pretty Ricky, they need to leave that shit alone. They need to leave it alone. For I mean, they sound good still because, again, Pleasure P basically was the sound of the group. And that's one of the big things with Shay. She keeps, you don't need them. You're fine by yourself. No, he's not, marketing-wise. The sound... Yes, he could produce the sound by himself, but marketing-wise, we kind of took to them because they were Pretty Ricky. So he can't be Pretty Ricky by himself, baby. He tried to do that, and it didn't work. So he knows for his money, he's going to bring the band back together, and they're going to do cabarets and shit. That's just how it's going to be. But God knows, Spectacular still got his body and all of that. Um... Still kind of cute, but doesn't have the 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 teenage, you know, teenage young adult vibe anymore. He looks like the old guy trying to be young. He yeah, he, he moved into like this. He's giving you the thirty year old that's still trying to pass himself off as nineteen. So yeah, you know what I mean. And they're still trying to market themselves that same way. And those girls that they appeal to have kind of grown up some. And then you got the, the the motherfucker with the raggedy head. That motherfucker, I still think he need pills. Because he just, you know, he should have been on, so he got to get the social security check. Because I don't think he's all quite there. And then you got this other little fat motherfucker with the two little clothes on who is a talented producer with a bad fucking attitude. What's his name? Um, Baby, Baby Blue. Talented, that it, it seems that his talents run in the writing and the producing, but he is so arrogant and he has a very bad attitude and him and Shay really don't hit it. She brought her ass down to a concert 
that they were that they had done. Chow and Shay let his ass have, but she was completely out of order. She came in with the black ass. She came in being shady. She came in talking reckless. You know, and just insulting them and just took every opportunity to let them know that they were absolutely late. The three of them were late and that was all about Pleasure P. That bitch was out of order. She was out of order and Pleasure, she got mad at him really because he didn't kind of stand up for her because the only one that really would say something to her was the um, uh, baby blue. He was like, where'd you get this? This, uh, what do you call her? Hood rat? I think he called her a hood rat and asked, did he get the bitch from the halfway house? I said, well, god damn. <laughs> That's how she's acting. So, eventually, he basically, Pleasure P just, like, sent her, and she was still going on and going off. I said, it's gonna be interesting seeing them. They ain't gonna end up together. That's, because she's just too out of pocket. Way out of pocket with her little ugly self. So, to hell with all that. Okay, so then we meet um, Bobby Lights. Bobby Lights is a bit much. He is a rapper and he, he's an actor and he does a lot of shit. He does, he's an entertainer. He does a lot of things. I mean, I believe that the child actually does have some talent. He is Trina's cousin, not just her cousin. He's her first cousin. And that's when I actually had to step back and I said, wait a minute. Trina, I was wondering, I, Trina's look always kind of threw me on to something. What the hell is Trina's background? Because he's her first cousin and he's straight up Hispanic, honey. So I said, okay. And then I was looking, I'm looking at everybody. Again, Miami, a lot of Spanish Descent, and I'm like, well, damn, that now it all makes sense. Okay, cool, no problem. All right, so we got it. You even see it in Trick and Trick Daddy. You see the, you can see it. I was like, all right, cool, no problem. So, um, I'm looking at him. Not a bad looking kid at all. Just too extra. He's very, very extra. Now let me let me just go ahead and say this. I have no problem. You know, I love the gays. All different types of gays. I don't have a problem with it. I love the LGBTQ, all of them. And I, I I, like from the most feminine to the most masculine, drag queens, transsexuals, trans men and women. You know, I'm always the advocate for my people. Those are my people. It is what it is. And I'll fight and I'll argue for them. When they're out of order, they're out of order. Now, I have an issue about people who try to box and try to tone down somebody else's gay because they're not comfortable with it. And from listening to the background of Bobby Lights, I can tell that he has probably battled with that a lot because he is very extra. And I don't think that it's all a put on. I think he just is one of the kids that are extra, which is like, okay, no problem. Um, I have no issue with that. Now, he's not very mature. He's very immature. So he has a lot of that going on too. And then I was really, it was making me look at Trina really funny because Trina does not like him. Flat out. It's the, you can't miss it. You can't get around it. He's her cousin. It is what it is. But she don't fucking like him. And that's all there's to it. She doesn't like him. And I was, I've was i watched the show twice. Because I was feeling some kind of way about Trina. Because I wasn't paying a whole lot of attention. And I was going in and out. And I was like, Trina, now I know good and well. I ain't liking the way that this is going. This is kind of seeming like one of them little things where you allow people, you're not real crazy about your cousin, and you allow the people around you to disrespect your cousin is what I was kind of getting, was the vibe I was getting. And I'm not totally wrong, because she does. She does kind of let people go off on him and lets everything be his fault. And I picked that up right away, okay? Um, and why I was able to pick that up is because I've actually gone through some of that. I've gone through being around family members who 
they are shady to you and you've learned to kind of let them slide because y'all they are your family members and then people who are around them take those attributes on and then they try to be shady to you and do the same thing and then you tear their fucking ass up and they don't understand why because your cousins actually trained them to mistreat you but they don't get that same leeway you gave the cousins and you be to beat the shit out of them so I've been there. I've walked that walk. But the only difference between me and good old Bobby Lights is that Bobby throws himself at Trina. He wants to be with Trina. He wants to be in her presence. And it's, oh, I, I, I uphold you and I do this, that, and the other. And at the same time, he said, she doesn't support my music. She doesn't have any interest in me. Well, why the fuck are you fucking with her? But it's because you have this other little issue that has nothing to do with your sexuality. And that th the situation with him and Trina, I don't believe his sexuality is the big issue. I think it's just him, his personality, period. He's got a nasty personality. He has an opportunistic personality. He also is over the top and in your face. And I'm going to make you see me and you're going to you're going to accept how, I, no, baby, ain't nobody got to do nothing. So that's where the problem is. It's not a problem. You know, I was, because I did, I had to keep going back and I watched, I literally watched the show twice because I didn't want to give Trina this bad rap because I was on her ass. I was on her ass when I first watched, but it was like, no, that's not what's going on. It literally, this just, it has nothing to do with sexuality because truly her assistant, Alvin, Alvin and Bobby just literally do not get along at all. They have had fights and episodes in the past, and they literally had a fight at a table at a restaurant, and I blame Trina for that because Trina could have shut that down. That didn't have to happen. That happened the way that it was supposed to happen, and I wasn't against Bobby totally in that. His reaction, I understood, and I was fine with his reaction. Um... They were at the table and Alvin popped off and talked some straight up shit to Bobby. Already knowing that y'all don't get along. Already knowing y'all have had altercations in the past. And you're going to sit up and tell him that he ain't shit and that he's beneath you and all of this. And Trina did not stop her assistant from saying these things to her cousin, which is where she was wrong. Bitch, shut that down. Shut that shit down. Trina sat there with her leg crossed. With her fucking leg crossed. And I think maybe the reason she did it, he, Bobby has this bad habit of calling the people that work for Trina her minions. And that is very disrespectful. So maybe that's why she allowed Alvin to get his shit off. But whenever Bobby is disrespecting them, she... Is chastising him. She didn't chastise Alvin. She literally let Alvin talk shit to her cousin the way she talked shit to her cousin. And I didn't like that. If you're going to shut it down, bitch, shut it all the way down on both sides. Well, she didn't. And it ended up costing Alvin. Because when I tell you that motherfucker, Bobby sat at that end of the table and she looked at him and said, uh, okay, and took them sunglasses off, baby, and took that food and gave him, you're going to wear all of it, bitch. Every bit of it. Now, I had no problem with that because I thought Alvin brought that on himself and it was Trina's fault because Trina could have shut that down. It didn't have to go that far. So whatever food got on Trina, bitch, you deserve to have that on you too. That wasn't cool. But like when she came out, and then they had a conversation. That should be the last conversation that Bobby and Trina ever even had. She told him flat out that no, she don't give a fuck about what he's trying to do. And no, she don't really enjoy him being around her. She basically told I don't like you. I don't like you. And he was going on. And that's what I said. Oh, my God. You, he was giving, you're, you're my cousin and this, that, and the other. Like she's supposed to put him on. She doesn't owe you anything. She doesn't owe you anything. See, that's a whole sordid mess. And their, their little situation is going to be a lot. And I'm glad I did 
go back and watch a second time because I really was being hard on Trina the first time. And I'm like, this is not all Trina. It's just a fucked up situation, period. And the thing is, Trina does play a part in it too because you can shut it down. You don't have to let him be around. You don't like him. You don't like him and he doesn't have enough good sense to not be around you because he's trying to squeeze the life out of you and get something out of you. And you haven't shut it down. You still keep letting them be around. So you welcome the drama. And so, bitch, part of it is your fault, too. But, Bobby, you need to get your ass somewhere and have several seats completely in the fuck section with your back turned to everybody else because you are full of shit. Completely full of shit. So, that's that. And, okay, so... When I told you about the whole gay thing versus hip hop, we actually seen a scene and I was like, oh, Mona, you touched on that. And that was pretty bold. And I was here for it. It was the, the truth of, of the matter. He was Bobby was telling this background story about, you know, having doors shut in your face and things of that nature when you are gay and then dealing with the hip hop community. And we saw him. And this one scene, take his little flash drive to the DJ of one of his songs. And the DJ gave it very much of, oh, okay, shook his hand and all of that. And then took the flash drive and threw it in the ashtray. And I was like, wow. And I was like, okay, my hat was off to, to Mona for actually showing that. Because that is the reality of the whole thing. Yes. Trash. Curb. Mm-hmm. Alright. Yep. Alright, sorry y'all. Anyway, um, so I was like, okay, cool. That was very interesting. Um, that she actually did go all the way out there with that. I was like, okay, Mona, I ain't mad at you, bitch. I ain't mad at you. Alright, so that's that. So we got that's the whole thing with Trina um and Bobby for now. For now. Okay, here's the the I saved this piece for last. Colorism. There's a big colorism issue that I think we're going to be dealing with here. And it all comes in the form of this beautiful, goddamn, she is, what, Dominican and Latina and black and just fucking beautiful. Amara La Negra, that bitch is motherfucking gorgeous. Do you hear me? Gorgeous. She really is. She's gorgeous as hell, but she crazier than a motherfucker. So it's a real issue that she's actually bringing to the table, and it's going to open up a lot of people's eyes. Um, and it's coming from a Latin standpoint. But I understand the struggle of it because, again, I am a darker skinned black person, so I can totally relate. It's crazy that there is colorism within your own racial community. It, it, it's always been crazy to me. I mean, I literally have cousins that are like second cousins and they have issues about being lighter and being darker. And, and it's like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I mean, you deal with racial with with racism when it's black versus white, and then you got to deal with it right within your own goddamn, you know, at your damn family reunion because you got the light skin cousins and dark. I think that's just so crazy to me. And then just to see that the Latin community actually has it going on too, and this is a lot of what her storyline is. Um, she met with a guy. His name is uh. Young Hollywood. He's a producer. And like I said, she's crazy as shit. She's just as crazy as she could be. She actually brought her mom. And I, I think that's a Latin thing anyway, because their moms are very vocal and they're very right there in your face. Um, you know, she brought her mom to a business meeting. And I thought it was funny, but you know, and her mom. Uh, her name, Mama Anna, she was, you know, on it and trying to see what the fuck is going on. And, you know, hey, that's her daughter. And I don't see any father around. So she playing both parts. So I understood it. 
I understood it, and he should have understood it too. Don't, you know, don't do too much. But you actually see him and her, they meet up, and he was just kind of, he was a little bit shady, you know, a little bit shady. And he was like, you know, I could teach her things. I think she's very talented. I think she has some things she could learn and some things that she could actually do with her career. I'm saying, I don't know about this whole bringing your mother, which to a business meeting, I have to teach her. She, she's going to learn that. And that was cool. That was cool. Um, but that has to do with her crazy, her crazy. And we got to see her crazy a little bit later on. Um, we saw her do a little performance. Bitch is bad. I mean, just everything's on point. The, the look, the body singing, that bitch, she got, she got something she working with, you understand me? And y'all know I don't even like girls, honey. She made me have to check myself. I said, check my pulse, honey. What's going on? Something going on, honey. Can't, I keep staring at this bitch. She, she's fabulous. She really is. But um, if she sat down, there's Amara, there's a girl, Simply Jess, and then Veronica Vega. And they were showing all, all three of them are Latinas and they are all different. And literally, Veronica Vega literally looks like she she looks like the 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 classic exotic Latina that you see, and you'd be like, "Wow!" And then simply Jess looks damn near like a white woman, and then you got Amara who looks damn near like a straight up black woman. You know what I mean? So it was like they were showing the, that Latinas come in all different flavors, just like black women come in different flavors. And within the community, there's some little racism issues that go on. Okay, so we go back. There's another little meeting that she actually has, Amara has, with Young Hollywood. And I wanted to knock his motherfucking head off. He goes right in. And if you took the accents out and turned away from the TV and just listened to the conversation, you would swear you were listening to a white, regular Caucasian man, executive, speaking to a little black girl. It was so disturbing and so problematic for me. He's going on telling her nothing about her talent. It's all about her look. You're a producer. Let's talk about the music because that's what I came here for. Talk about the music. He's focusing in on this look and telling her. he When he started the conversation and said, you know, what would you say if I told you, you know, like let's focus on like your look and that kind of thing. So and she's like, what do you mean? And he's like, if you could be a little more Beyonce and a little less Macy Gray. What the fuck is that? What is that? And which being that she was asking, what Beyonce are you talking about? Because Beyonce will rock a fro too. Beyonce is everything. Beyonce, she covers everything. Beyonce will give you, she get will give you straight up bone straight hair. She'll give you fro. She'll give you braids. So all of that. But you're the Macy Gray thing, the old nappy headed bitch. That's you know, that's what you're giving. That shit got up underneath my skin. I said, now see, I want to punch him in the face on all four sides. Pip pop, pip pop, tear his ass up. He was just doing the, the most for me. I did not like that. And basically, he was, she says, so you're saying, he's like, well, you know, I'm talking about, like, can you be elegant? And she's like, so what? I can't be elegant with a fro? And he's like, well, no. All I'm going to say, and I've been talking a long time, this is 28 minutes, I'm going to get on up out of here. Because we got a whole season of this, baby. And we, I'm sure we're going to revisit this again. But this, the only good thing I saw is, you see my thumbnail for this video. We started to get to see some of Amara's psychotic, crazy bitch, honey. She, she was giving him this, honey, when she was talking to us. I said, girl, she is giving me psycho con, honey. And I am here for every fucking bit of it. She ended up turning around and walking her big old ass on out of there on him. But I got so pissed off with that. That got up underneath my crawl, honey. I didn't care for it. Tell me what y'all think. Am I being a little too sensitive? Because again, I am a darker skinned black 
So tell me, do you think I'm being too sensitive? Did I read too much into the conversation? I want to know what you all thought when you seen it. And until next Monday, later. <laughs>